Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Parallel Programming. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about pthreads. Now, when we talked about C++11 threads, we said that C++11 threads are really just a wrapper around another implementation, and it's a way to make um, writing parallel code portable because now we have something that's in the you know the actual language std thread, and we don't need to worry about the implementation behind it. And we can see this with our C++11 threads example that we went over um, a few videos ago. So if I go ahead and compile uh, threads, but I don't link against anything, I end up getting an error here saying undefined reference to pthread create. So behind the scenes, my C++11 threads are spawning threads using pthread create. They're using pthreads. And so if we go ahead and try to compile this again, but link it against lib pthread now, we see it compiles just fine. And it's indeed linking against lib pthread. So that's the implementation on this machine. But it may be different if you're on, say, a Windows machine. It's probably not going to be using pthreads. Okay, so let's go ahead and see, you know, how would we actually implement, say, our, you know, simple example of, say, printing out, you know, an ID from multiple different threads using pthreads instead. And I should say that most of the time, um, or the majority of time, you should be using C++11 threads, just because it's an easy way to write portable code. Um, now, for something like pthreads, there may be niche scenarios where you do want, say, the fine-grained control, or if it's only running on a system that uses pthreads, maybe it's worth it to just implement it with pthreads. Um, but in the large majority of cases, C++11 threads should be your default you know, way to go. Um, because even with C++11 threads, you can actually get access to some of the pthreads features as well using some of the um, some you know, special calls in C++. And we'll look at that at the end of the video. So let's go ahead and uh, open up pthreads. So the first thing, of course, we need to inc inc uh, include a header, just like we included thread. This time we're including pthread. So down here, uh, let's go to our main function first. So just like we created thread objects with our C++11 threads, here we're creating a bunch of these types p thread t. So these are basically our threads. So we'll create four of them. We'll have an array of IDs as well. So these are the IDs we're going to print out, how we're going to identify these threads. And then we have where we actually spawn our threads from. And we spawn our threads using this p thread create, just like what C++11 threads on this system uses um, in the background. And they're gonna take four different arguments. So the first one is just the address of this thread type, this p thread t right here. So we're just passing in the address of it. And then we have another optional argument here, and this is just thread attributes. So again, you know, with some of the pthreads, we have a lot of control over, you know, how these threads look, how they behave, what they do, things like scheduling, uh, things that we don't necessarily have access to just using uh, normal C++11 threads. Uh, so here, if we just want to use the default, we can just pass in null. Uh, then we have our function pointer, so we can go ahead and pass in our function name. So that's this print func right here. And then um, at the very end, uh, we'll see we're passing in something that we're casting to a void pointer. And it's the address of some integer here. So we've got our array of integers, and we're casting a pointer to an integer to a void pointer. All right, so this may look kind of confusing, but let's go back, let's go to our function that we're passing in, our function pointer, and let's see why. So the way the pthreads works, um, unlike C++11 threads where, you know, we can have uh, multiple different, you know, parameters that we can just pass in and, you know, we can basically just put them inside of our function call, right? Um, we don't actually have that in pthreads. In pthreads, you pack all of your arguments into, you know, something that's casted to a void pointer, and then you pass all of the things you return into something that's casted to a void pointer. So you end up having to unpack them inside of your function. So here, when we're passing in an ID, we go ahead and have to, you know, cast our, you know, our integer pointer that we cast to a void pointer back to an integer pointer here in order to get access to it. And then uh, the second thing we have is our mutexes. So we use std mutex um, inside of our uh, code with C++11 threads. But here we're not using std mutex, we're using p a pthread mutex t up here. So here we're creating a pthread mutex t We'll call it lock, and then we go ahead and we have to initialize it. So we have two ways to initialize it. We can do the static initialization using this pthread mutex initializer and just setting it equal to it. The other way we could uh, go ahead and initialize it is by using this pthread mutex init. So this is for dynamics initialization. And we can even pass attributes to our, um, to our mutex lock. So we can, uh, you know, the first parameter for pthread mutex init is going to be, you know, the address of the lock we're initializing. 
Um, but the second parameter is actually you know, a set of attributes that we can change for this mutex, something that we don't really have in C++11 mutexes, right? We just really have, here's a mutex. Okay, so um, then inside of our function, you see to lock, it's pretty similar to our mutex in um, C++11. Instead of calling you know, uh, you know, a lock method on our mutex, here we're just calling the function pthread mutex lock and we're passing the address of our lock and then when we need to unlock it, we go ahead and just call pthread mutex unlock. And this just makes our critical section this print right here. And then at the very end, we call pthread exit null. Now we have a lot of options here in reality, and I'll post a document that shows you know a bunch of great examples of programming with pthreads. But what this pthread exit really does is just you know basically kills the thread when we're done with it. Um, and then this null just says we don't really want to pass anything back, right? It's basically we don't want, you know, to pass back a return code or the status code. Um, and when we go back to our code down here, you see at the very end of our main function, we have pthread exit null here, right? And so this seems kind of weird. We're not doing normal return zero. And it may seem kind of funny because, you know, well, what happens if our main function finishes before our, uh, before any of our threads finish? So the way that this pthread exit, um, this pthread exit called from our main function uh, behaves, is it will actually block until the other four threads that it spawned, right? That this main function spawn complete, right? So this is basically blocking. So after all four of the threads complete, it goes ahead and you know the main thread will finally exit. Now this just allows us to avoid writing code to go ahead and join the four threads, which we don't really care about because we don't we don't really care when each of the four threads arrive we don't need to join them in any particular order so and our program's ending anyway so we can just call pthread exit basically just telling the main thread to stay alive long enough for the rest of the threads to exit so let's go ahead and compile this and see how it works so you know we'll go ahead and exit out we'll do g plus plus on pthreads and just like with our c plus plus 11 threads that basically just a wrap around pthreads we have to link against l pthread and we'll call the output maybe just pthread so we'll run it and you'll see it prints, you know, 0, 1, 3, 2, 0, 2, 1, 3. So it can go around in really any order here, um, right? So with that critical section, we're just making sure that two threads can't, you know, kind of print out interleaved. Only one thread can do that entire print before another thread comes in. So that's going to be, a, you know, our basic introduction here. So a couple final notes, like I said, you know, through C++11, so this is kind of more motivation to not use pthreads directly. You can call this std thread native handle here, right? And the return of this is an implementation defined handle type representing the thread. So you see here we're going we're going ahead and we're launching some std threads, so t1 and t2. But we can go ahead and call something like pthread get sketch param, and we can get you know basically access to that pthread um, that pthread t type using this t1 native handle, so a native handle to the thread. Um, another final thing is I'll go ahead and link this below. So this is from Lawrence Livermore National Lab, a lot of times just called LLNL. So this is a great um, introduction to programming with pthreads. Um, it goes through you know a whole bunch of the different topics, including oh, let me go ahead and pull that back up. A lot of the different topics, including you know you know creating threads, uh, the API itself, mutexes, condition variables. Um, and other types of debugging and performance analysis information with these threads. So I'll link this below as well. But that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. As always, all the code can be found at github.com slash coffee before arch under repositories and under parallel programming here. So it'll be just under basics and pthreads. So feel free to download this, play around with it. Let me know if you have any questions. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.